Thank you for joining us today. Today it's going to be a good day because we're going to be looking at living God's purposes. But before we do that, the worship team is going to lead us into worship. So enter before the Lord today that he may touch your heart and prepare you to receive what he has to say to you today. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen faithfulness, my fortress, lover and over.
There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body, and your blood you shed. Jesus. 
I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my.
Thank you, worship team. Today, as we talk about living God's purposes, we're going to be looking in in Joshua chapter 1. With everything that's happening around us in this world, there are times that our purpose gets kind of clouded. That God put us on this earth for a reason, and God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives, and God wants us to use us far beyond what any of us could possibly even imagine. However, we have a problem when it comes to God per, God's purposes, and that's because of the barriers that we put up. In our mind, in our beliefs, in our heart, barriers that say, how could God ever use somebody like me? And so for God to use us for his great purposes we must change the way we think. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says this. The Bible says as a person thinks in their heart, that is who they are going to be. Since God has a purpose and a plan for our lives, what we need to find out is what that purpose is. Is because if we're not being used of God, what are we being used for? And if we're not doing what he wants to do in our lives. God, how is that going to affect how we live? What are you doing with God? Has, what God has graciously given you? The Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God has something bigger and greater than you ever imagined what the apostle paul was saying is god's plans and his purposes for our lives are sometimes mind-boggling and it's hard for us to imagine you know through jeremiah the lord says for i know the thoughts that i think toward you thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope and in Ephesians 3.20, Paul says that God is able to do abundantly more than we could ever possibly ask or even imagine. Now, the Bible says in the beginning that we were made in the image and the likeness of God. And seeing that God is our creator, he made us to be creative as well. And in that creativity, he's given us the ability to imagine. So let's start imagining what God can do through our lives. Unfortunately, many people have no imagination when it comes to what God wants to do. Even though we can marvel at man's imagination, we still can't imagine God using us. You know, God wants to use us in great mighty ways, and therefore we need to employ our imagination. We need to start dreaming about what God can do through us. Where's your imagination for the kingdom of God? When God starts revealing it, we need to start living it. Like I said today, we're looking at Joshua chapter 1. And there are four things that we need to know if we desire God to use us for his purposes. God has done a remarkable thing through ordinary people who imagine themselves doing something more. But the first thing is we need to get rid of doubt. You know, when our biggest purpose busters is doubt, we must let go of our doubt so that we can move forward in the plans and the purposes of God. 
doubt limits your potential. It causes procrastination, which causes us to miss out on God's best. We see doubt, in other words, like excuses when the opportunity arrives. Oh, I just don't have the time. I don't, I can't. I can't do it. I'm too busy. I mean, we start making excuses. James says that anyone who lacks wisdom, they need to ask God, and God will liberally supply the wisdom that's needed. But then he warns this. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. When we doubt, we miss out. Therefore, before God can use us, we need to deal with the doubt issue. Joshua had this problem. <laughs> In the military, they would say he, would, he had a confidence problem. And who wouldn't? Look at who he was following. He was following Moses. Moses did mighty things in the wilderness as God was working. Nobody would want to follow him. But then there's God's assignment. He was to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. Something Moses failed to do. And so Joshua begins to doubt his thinking. Who, who wouldn't? I mean, he was doing something that Moses wasn't able to do. So he was doubting. And so Joshua had doubts. And how do I know this? Because right before the crossing of the Jordan River and the starting the campaign to take the promised land, God had to give Joshua a pep talk. Not once, but three times he had to give him a pep talk. He, said, he tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. God told Joshua, be strong and have good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God will is with you wherever you go. The Lord was telling Joshua to dump his doubts, to get rid of them, because he was going to be with him. Doubt is a choice. People choose to doubt rather than to live by faith. Now, there are two basic things that cause doubt. First is comparing ourselves. Instead of looking to God, we start looking at everybody else. Others have more talent, they have more abilities, they have more education, they got more money, they got no. The Bible says, stop comparing ourselves to the foolishness. God wants to use you. But they're only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as a standard of measurement. How? That's the wrong way to do it. In fact, 2 Corinthians 10, 12 states that. Especially if you look at it in the New Living Translation, it says it exactly like this. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as a standard of measurement. How ignorant. Joshua was constantly comparing himself to Moses. Which is why I believe God had to remind Joshua at the very beginning that Moses is dead. The second thing that, that contributes to their thing is, our causes of doubt is remembering our failures. Remembering our failures is like replaying a movie in our minds repeatedly. Now, but God doesn't want us to focus on our past. Now, let me say that there is a difference between knowing our past and focusing on it. Knowing our past mistakes helps us from not repeating those mistakes again. But focusing on them, their past, will never help the present. We get stuck in the past, nor will we allow God to use the future. Think about people God used in the Bible. Moses was a murderer before he became a deliverer. Jacob was a liar and a manipulator before he became the father of Israel. King David, a man after God's own heart, was an adulterer and a murderer. Abraham, before he became the father of the Jewish nation, gave his wife away 
not one time, but twice. And then before the apostles were apostles, Paul was a religious terrorist. And Peter was a hard-headed, tempered man who always was putting his foot in his mouth. But God used them just as he wants to use you. We all have things in our past. But we don't let, need to allow those things to capture us and keep us from fulfilling God's purpose. The second thing that we need to do is believe God's promises. You know, even at the beginning, God reminds Joshua of the promises he made. Joshua 1.3 Every place that your sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. When God makes a promise, he keeps it. If he says he's going to use it, he'll use it. If he says he'll bless it, he will bless it. God keeps his promises and his word. Even at the end of the life of Joshua, he confirmed this reality. In Joshua 23, 14, it says this, You know that with all your heart and your soul, that not one of the good promises the Lord your God gave to you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. If you want God to use you, we need to believe. We need to believe his promises. Now, the place where we can find his promises is in the word. And if we're going to grow in our faith, we got to be growing in the word. And we got to get the word in our heart. Let it come through. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. To Joshua, God made, he promised these three things. First, he promised strength. In verse 5, he says that no one would be able to stand against Joshua. Whatever God asks us to do, he'll give us the strength to do. There's an adage that says, where God guides, God provides. That's an amazing saying. Where God guides, God provides. He will supply whatever's needed. Second, God promised Joshua success. Several times, God tells Joshua that he will be successful. But God's promise of success isn't the world's, but rather it's in what God is calling us to do. Sometimes we, we get this mindset that when God says we're going to be successful, that, that we're going to have a big house, big car, money, money, money. That's not true. God wants to work in our life. I can tell you, money doesn't fulfill things. Stuff doesn't fulfill things. But when we are acting in the promises of God and his purposes, man, fulfillment comes right away. Success, his success. Third thing that God promised was his support. In verse 9, God commands Joshua to be strong and of good courage because God would be with him wherever he went. It is said that God's word does not lack in any way. God does not lack in support. He, he gives you what you need. If we want to get God's wisdom in our lives, then we need to get into the Bible. This is what God told Joshua. In Joshua 1.8, it says this, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do it according to what is written. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Notice the order and the wording. Success doesn't happen until there is obedience. And su success is not based on our ability. Rather, it's based on our commitment to God's word. The third thing we need to do is lean on God. To lean on God means to depend on whatever you're leaning on. If you're leaning on a wall, you're depending on that wall to stay up, to hold you up. And that's what God is asking us to do when it comes to our relationship with him. Lean on him. To Joshua, God said this in 1.5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. God is saying, Joshua, you can lean on me. 
And that's what Joshua did. When Joshua leaned on God, he couldn't be defeated. But when he stopped and he leaned upon his own understanding, then he failed. You know, after defeating Jericho and Ai, Joshua and the elders were feeling confident. They've, they've just won two miraculous battles. And when a group of men came from them seeking a treaty, telling Joshua they were from far away, Joshua and the elders looked at their clothing and their supplies. They were all ragged and tattered and torn, and they made a treaty with them. Only later did they realize that these people lived right next door. And because of that, the Jewish people weren't able to attack them and possess their land. Joshua forgot to inquire of God. First, he leaned on his own understanding, and he didn't ask God for insight and information. We don't need to be there. We need to lean on God to trust him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Joshua should have went to the Lord and asked him about these guys. Who and what are you leaning on for strength? Is it other people? Is it possessions? Is it power? These are shaky ground that will let you down every time. We can't lean upon ourselves. And that's because we can't even make promises that we keep to ourselves sometimes. But having this kind of faith that works in times of uncertainty and having the faith that God will hold us up and he'll keep his promises, the fourth thing we need to do is step out in faith. Then comes the time we must stop discussing what God has called us to do and start doing it. We must step out by faith. If God is telling us to do something, it's time that we stop praying about it and start doing it. You know, we keep procrastinating sometimes. God doesn't want us to do that. We have to step out in faith in spite of our feelings, in spite of our fears, in spite of our doubts. And it's time we must step out and do what God is calling us to do. And this is what Joshua did. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, it's time to go. The moment had come. God had commanded them to move. So they had finally got to get up and go for it. They had to cross the Jordan River. They had to step out in faith, which they literally had to do. And the people crossed over because they did what they were supposed to do. So the question becomes, what is our Jordan? And I believe they, they stepped into the water and the water parted. It wasn't parted and then they stepped in. They stepped into the water and the water parted. So what is your Jordan? What are the barriers that, that are stopping you from crossing the Jordan River? What is the barrier stopping you from being used by God? Whatever it is, you need to step out in faith. And please understand the first step is always the hardest because it's not going to make a whole lot of sense at times. But we must move forward by faith. God said to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Courage isn't the absence of fear. Rather, it's moving forward despite the fear. God's miracle and purpose is awaiting ahead of you, not behind you. Some say, I'm too old for stepping out. Well, let me remind you about something. Joshua was 80 when he started on this. Others say, well, now's not the good time. It's, it's too hard. But look what Solomon says. He observes the wind will not sow. He regards the clouds will not reap. You know, my parents always told me, he says, if we waited till we had money to have kids, we wouldn't have no kids. 
And that's the way it is a lot of times with God's purpose. If we wait on everything to fall in line before we do the things that God calls us to do, we will never do them. Solomon was saying that if we're waiting for the right time and the perfect conditions, then we'll never get anything done. Can you imagine what God wants to do in your lives if we just believe? There's no greater thrill than being used by God to touch somebody, to, to see somebody come to the Lord, to touch somebody's life, to minister to somebody, to make their day. And if God isn't using us, then what are we wasting our life doing? The life that he's so graciously given us. We're wasting it. So let's get rid of our doubts. Let's believe God's promises. Let's trust him. Let's lean upon the Lord and let's step out in faith to do the things God calls us to do. You know, there are people all around you that need to hear about Jesus Christ. You may be the person that needs to share with them. I encourage you to do the things that are necessary to step out in faith. Let me pray for you. Father, I just come to you and I ask that you help each person today. That they would have the strength to, do, to step out and see the purposes you want to do. Not doubt, but to step out. To believe your word. To trust you that you're going to bring them through this. That you're going to work in their life in such a way that will transform them. Lord, I just give you glory and I give you honor. And I thank you for the things you're going to do in people's lives. In your name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you joined with us today. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing from you. You can contact me through email. You can contact me through the U.S. mail. You can support the church through the U.S. mail, through our website using PayPal, or using your bank, Bill Pay. We would love to hear from you. I hope that this message has touched your life today. If it has, 